I don't get it. Why doesn't this forest terrain look like a forest terrain? Uh, uh, because of the scale? Well, yes, you idiot, but why doesn't it look like a 28 millimeter forest terrain? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, I know what we are missing is proper trees that would make Odin himself green of envy. <laughs> Hi good folks, my name is Leif, and I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel called Devs and Dice, where I paint miniatures or craft amazing terrain for the tabletop. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how I did these fantasy style trees for my tabletop, be it D&D, Frostgrave, or any Warhammer game. Now, just before we continue, I see that just a small fraction of my viewers are actually subscribed to my channel. Please do me a favor and subscribe to support the channel. Remember, it's free and you can change your mind at any point. All right, with that out of the way, let's get into the crafting. Okay, so what you're going to need is some 3mm and 1mm aluminium wire and some pliers, different kinds, everything from cutting to actuals, the ones that you can more shape the wire with. Now, I usually cut the wires at about 12 inches long. Now, for this specific tree, I folded them in half just to make a sort of shorter but more thick tree. And when it comes to the actual branches, I just, you know, twist them around about halfway of the wire's length. Then I separate them and then I twist them into two new branches. And I find that that's a good sort of baseline to get an approximate shape of a tree. Now here is another example of uh, essentially a, a, exactly the same amount of wires, but for this one I didn't fold it in half, I wanted a more sort of long and majestic tree. But here you can much more clearly see what I was referring to. I split up all of the wires into two main branches and then once I feel like oh there should be an offshoot here somewhere and then I you know basically just bit by bit build up the tree and I do the same thing with the roots of course and once you've sort of tried this a couple of times you'll end up with something that looks a little bit like this almost looks like a graveyard for uh, trees or something Now, in order to bulk up these trees, we're going to be using some aluminium foil. Now, this is quite cheap and a good way to just, you know, make sure that you can bulk up the trees wherever you think they need a little bit more, well, volume. I tend to just sort of roll the aluminium foil loosely into a cylinder or something like that, like, uh, and then just sort of put it approximately where I want and I and I usually also sort of go around the tree following the general sort of flow of the wiring and if you do that you will end up with perhaps something looking a little bit like this now you'll notice that I have plenty of exposed wirings and that is entirely okay we're gonna be covering them up with some super sculpey now, I bought this pasta machine last time I did uh, some work with Super Sculpey, and that was when I did the miniature giant doors, if you remember. Now, the good thing about this is that I can get an even distribution of clay all over the tree, and it's much easier when you have something, you know, to flatten them out quite evenly. So I just went, um, uh, you know, forwards and did a whole bunch of these so I could, you know, focus on actually covering the trees in an even layer of Sculpey. Now this is actually a little bit tricky because I tend to always get into the position where I've placed too much Sculpey on the ends of the branches and it looks kind of weird so 
you might have to go back and forth a couple of times in order to get, you know, a good, you know, feeling for the shape. Now, for these offshoot branches, I tend to like to, you know, roll up um, a sausage of, uh, of, of you know, small sausage of clay, and then I sort of just put it around the actual branch just to sort of exaggerate uh, you know that this is an offshoot and I just think it makes it look quite nice and I did the same thing in my old trees if you remember the ones I did for my forest scatter terrain video now at this point I sort of realized that oh yeah I probably need smaller uh, you know branches so I actually went in and I just twisted in some one millimeter wire here and there now, this isn't exactly ideal, but it worked out in my case. And in all honesty, the one millimeter aluminium wire was an afterthought for me at this point. But since you're going to cover everything in clay, it actually works out pretty nice. Now, another trick you can do is if you take a long sort of a sausage of clay like I have here, I sometimes also like, you know, put it on the shape of a tree and then I follow that shape up until or down to the actual root. And of course we need to have knots and whatnot in these fancy trees and you can see my homemade sculpting tool. Uh, push pin put into uh, an old brush. Works pretty nice. In general when it comes to sculpting what you want to do once you have the rough shape uh, laid out you want to create a uh, lot of wood grain so just you know drag whatever tool you have you know alongside creating a nice grain now at this point when i had finalized all of the sculpting on the trees i put them in the oven and i simply followed the instructions which i seem to remember was 125 to 130 degrees celsius for about 20 minutes for each quarter inch now I had them in a little bit longer because I figured better safe than sorry, and I've yet to have a single crack. Now on to the next problem, which really is the canopy of the trees. Now I knew I wanted a more fluffy or more airy sort of canopy, and for this I went with a new product I haven't used at all before this, which was sea foam trees from Green Stuff World. Now, when it came to this seafoam tree, I was quite, I didn't know what to expect, but I, I used uh, some super glue and some activator uh, just to sort of get them quickly attached to the wiring. Now, they seemed quite fragile and honestly, in order to get like nice coverage, it felt like I was going through these two small bags that I had quite quickly. Now, because they were so fragile, I thought that I wanted to sort of make them more resistant to exterior pressure. So I just came in with the latex that I had at home and sort of coated the, you know, the connections. Now, at this point, I ran into two major problems. As you saw, I used super glue and activated to attach the sea foam trees to the metal wiring. Well, I ran out of activator. And for some unholy reason, there didn't seem to be any activator in any store in my vicinity. Now, I could have used the old, you know, super glue and baking soda trick, but an additional problem was looming on the horizon. I was running out of sea foam trees. The only material I had home that could make up a substructure was coconut fiber. I have worked with uh, coconut fiber before when I did the bushes and the small trees, and I do like the look of them. They, they are much more sort of wild grown and such, and I used essentially just my hot glue gun and just attached them bit by bit. The problem though with um, coconut fiber I feel is that they are a little bit too chaotic for trees, but you know what? this was my best option. Now to sort of lessen the chaotic nature, I just uh, used my scissors and sort of cut up the different coconut fiber just to, you know, break it up a little bit. Now once I was happy, and actually there you can see uh, this tree became a combination between sea foam tree and uh, coconut fiber. But anyways, once I was happy with all of these uh, trees, I decided to coat them in uh, 
cement spray, which essentially is watered out uh, mod podge, uh, just to sort of give everything one covered of hopefully strengthen it up. Now, when it came to priming, by the way, note the blue filter in the background. It won't stay blue very for very much longer. Um, I came in with some, uh, what was it, uh, olive drab, which was the primer that I had uh, for the airbrush that was closest to brown. Now, the reason why I'm using an airbrush is, of course, because the sea foam trees are so, so fragile. So I am trying to just get some sort of, you know, coverage. And here, I'll be honest, I tried something I should not have tried with the airbrush. I used some thick body acrylic paint and it didn't work out well. So I actually had to pretty much use miniature paint. And I think it was dirt spatter and oak brown from Army Painter. And after that, I'm going in with some burnt sienna just to sort of make a first dry brush on the trees. And here I'm coming in with, with a much more sort of uh, golden brown second dry brush just to get you know the, a little bit more color variation in it now for the final dry brushing i'm going to come in with some gray umber which is essentially like an off-white i would argue and as usual i'm taking the highlights to 11 because i'm going to be dialing this down with my terrain wash Now the trees will look a little bit something like this and you can really start to see them taking shape. But like I said, I'm going to be spritzing on some of that black brown terrain wash uh, all over these trees. Now this is uh, quite messy, but uh, it, it's worth it, believe me. Now, meanwhile, I did some MDF bases. This is just 3mm MDF. And the first job is really to just get these attached to... Um, is to get these trees attached to the bases. And that's what uh, they look like as of now. Now, now I'm going to come in with some burnt umber, just hobby acrylics. And I'm just going to give the bases a... Uh, couple of coats of this just so they don't come across as you know mdf colored now just to create that sort of forest floor feel i'm gonna be spreading a bunch of pva glue and then i'm gonna flock this using some of that coconut fiber that i have grounded up using a coffee grinder now, this is an excellent flock. I find it to just sort of have a nice forest, you know, um, floor. In order to lock everything down, I'm going to come in with some IPA alcohol, which breaks the surface tension. And then just dropping on some watered down PVA, and that will lock everything down. Now, when it came to the <laughs> beginning of flocking, I was in a very sort of particular problem. I, the weather here isn't exactly nice, uh, and I had to resort to use something that I could use indoors. And for me, that meant um, I was going to use matte PVA, or sorry, matte Mod Podge. Now here I'm coming in with some coarse turf medium green, and I'm taking this a little bit bit by bit because I'm not sure how this will, you know, how it will turn out and if the mod podge will actually you know do a fairly decent job or not mod podge also has a tendency to dry quite quickly so it's better to take it step by step but i'm happy to tell you that mod podge works just as good as most sort of tacky glues i've used now once i had all of the foliage in place i just coat it properly with that scenic cement from woodland scenics and once I have that on, I'm going to come in with some blended turf just for the highlights. Then the blended turf I'm actually quite uh, liberal with because I do think that it's not a super highlighted, you know, highlight. However, the fine turf, uh, yellow fine, yellow grass fine turf is much more, you know, contrasty. So that I'm being a little bit more scarce with, but I do like the result of it. 
now an old fan favorite and you can see I'm running out of uh, PVA glue as well but regardless a fan favorite is of course the moss and uh, for this I'm using Ziterdes uh, from or Noch their green flock now I'm just mixing this in a tub creating a nice sort of paste and then I'm using just a coffee stir stick just to you know place it wherever I think moss exists and I actually did do some uh, some investigation and you know what moss can actually exist wherever so uh, when it comes to tufts I decided to use a little bit of army painter and a little bit of gamers grass tufts these uh, trees are actually quite large now as of now you might not have gotten a scale but you will see that um, the openings of this tree for instance are large enough for a one inch figure to just go under which was exactly what I was after I wanted large majestic legendary oak trees and I wanted them to really breathe fantasy And with that, I think it's time to have a look at the final result. folks now that was that even though this build was quite long and complicated i am so happy that i finally made some proper fantasy like trees for my future tabletop endeavors on that note i just want to come with a small suggestion if you're going to do these kind of trees the sea foam trees are quite fragile so i wouldn't personally build it for my local you know gaming group or whatever where like any person can grab a hold of the trees and manhandle them however um i'm gonna be the one that handles my trees and i'm gonna be careful because they are still quite fragile i do suspect that you might be able to use like a more easy flowing latex to just strengthen them up but wow do they turn out very nice so what did you think about the build? Please feel free, as always, to tell me in the comment section down below. 
Now, if you like the channel and the kind of videos that I create, there are several ways you can support the channel. Now, subscribe, of course, if you haven't already. Like the video so that the almighty YouTube algorithm will know to share my video with other people. And also, you can join my Patreon. And as always, I want to do a shout out to my warrior level patrons, Blake Crowl and Chris Grob. And a new shout out to my new legend level patron, Leander. You are insane, but thank you. So with this, I want to thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you will have an amazing day. Stay safe and I will see you in the next video.